Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Azul Access 4. And this is a mini PC stick. A few years ago I actually did a review on the Access 3. And performance on that unit was pretty impressive. I actually had it hooked up to one of my 4K TVs in my office and I just used it for streaming 4K content. But Azul has finally released their fourth iteration called the Access 4. I've actually been pretty excited about this, so let's go ahead and get it out of the box. We're going to go over the specs, do some performance testing, and then I'll give you my final thoughts by the end. So inside of the box, you're going to receive a user manual, or your user guide, some support documentation on this little card here. We'll get a little deeper. You can see we have the stick here, and we have another little box with some accessories. I believe we just have the HDMI cable and power supply. And by HDMI cable, this is actually an extension, just in case it doesn't fit in the back of your monitor, because the HDMI dongle is actually attached to the stick itself. And as for the power supply, 5 volts, 3 amps, and they're utilizing a small barrel jack here, so we can get all the power into this mini PC. And finally, we have the Access 4 itself. Now this is a full-fledged Windows PC, or Linux if you choose to install it, but it does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Pro. And it's powered by a quad-core Intel Celeron CPU. Now on their website, they're listing this as the J4125, but the one I have here is actually powered by the J4105. And I was kind of thrown off by this because I expected this to have the J4125. I've tested both of these chips, and to tell you the truth, there's not much of a big difference between the two. But on paper, the J4125 is a more powerful chip. As for I.O. on the Access 4, up front here we have an audio jack and a full-size gigabit Ethernet port. On one side we have a micro SD card slot, good up to a 512 gigabyte card, full-size USB 3.0 port, power input, we also have our power button over here. And on the other side we have a USB Type-C port, and this will do video out, so there's a total of two video outputs on this unit, given the built-in HDMI and the USB Type-C. And like we saw with the unboxing, they do include an HDMI extension cable, just in case you can't reach the HDMI ports on the TV or monitor you want to run this with. So it looks like they're offering several different CPU configurations for the Access 4, and I happen to get the one with the J4105, but on their website they only have the J4125 listed. So aside from the different CPU configurations that you can pick up, all of them are going to have the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics, along with 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 2133 megahertz. 64 to 128 gigabytes of internal storage, plus a micro SD card slot, good up to a 512 gigabyte card, dual band AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, gigabit Ethernet, one USB 3.0 port, one USB Type-C port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and it does come preloaded with Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. But in their brochure, they also state that you can run Ubuntu on here, and I have no doubt about it. Linux will run on this little machine. Okay, so I've had some time to spend with the Access 4. I've installed a few applications that we're going to be testing out. We'll also test out a few games. I've been up and running with this session for 22 minutes, and we've only hit a maximum of 54 degrees Celsius, which is actually way better than I thought it would be, being that this is such a small, confined space for the CPU to be in. But we do have a very low-powered CPU, the Intel Celeron J4105. Quad-core, 1.5 GHz, with a burst up to 2.4, and that's how it's configured with this machine here. 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2133, and it is running in dual channel mode. And for the graphics, we have the built-in Intel UHD 600. So it's not a powerful machine whatsoever, but it would get you by for everyday use. And it even does a pretty decent job with 4K video playback. The very first thing I wanted to take a look at was the Geekbench 5 score. Single core, 402, multi, 1192. Recently I've tested the Chewy Lark box, and we're really not that far off. Keep in mind that the Chewy Lark box was actually running the J4115. And somehow the Access 4 actually beat it out just by a bit in multi-core performance. So using the Access 4 as an everyday PC for web browsing, email checking, YouTube video playback, it actually performs really well. Had really great luck with it. We're on Wi-Fi right now. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network. Everything loads up fast. I'm using the Edge browser. I've also tested Chrome. But on these lower end systems, I personally prefer the new Edge browser. So yeah, I mean, using this like a lot of people use their PCs, mainly for internet browsing, works out just fine. Even video playback from YouTube, 1080p, and 4K does a really great job with this little system. 
Now, this is definitely not designed or even marketed as a gaming PC, but we will take a look at some gaming after we head over to YouTube, check out some 4K playback. I'll go ahead and get this loaded up. I believe we're at 1080p right now. I will take it up to 4K. Stats for nerds. Yeah, we're sitting at 1080p, so we need to hit 4K. I'm going to give it a second to buffer out. So on the initial load in, I do get some drop frames here, and it continues to give me a few drop frames every once in a while, but if we didn't have this chart on screen right now, you'd never notice it. But I do have to say, I have seen better 4K video playback out of the same chip on other systems. I think it all comes down to the power management that they're using. They can't totally max out the wattage on this chip at 15 watts in the case that it's in because it's not actively cool. This is a fanless design, so the power profile that they do have set up in the BIOS, which by the way cannot be changed by the end user, is a bit on the low side. So burst speeds on the CPU and the GPU don't last for long, which does affect performance in the long run. But if you're using this device like most people use their PCs, you shouldn't have any issues. If you want to get online, browse the web, check your email, edit some online documents, use Skype or Zoom, this little machine will handle it just fine. And it even does a pretty decent job with low-end PC games like Minecraft. I do have Afterburner running up in the top left-hand corner, and we're at a pretty much constant 60. I do notice it drop down every once in a while, and the lowest I've seen it go is around 55 FPS. You'll see the CPU clock is sitting at 1.8 to 1.9. It does jump up to 2.4 every once in a while. And that GPU clock is also pretty low. So this is the burst happening on the CPU. And the power profiles that they have just don't allow it to go there full time. But as you can see, it's actually handling Minecraft quite well. So let's take it up a notch. We're going to test out CSGO. Very low settings. 1024 by 768 at a 4x3 aspect ratio. On average, I'm getting around 23 FPS. And while that GPU clock is high enough for this chip, 400 to 500 megahertz is usually normal, our CPU clock is really low here. And this is due to the power limitations of the stick. And the final game I wanted to test was Overwatch. While our CPU and GPU clocks are really low here, that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is the amount of RAM we have. As you can see, we're at 3.6 gigs. We are totally maxed out. We're moving over into virtual memory, and that's where all this horrible stuttering is coming from. Next thing I wanted to do was test a little bit of emulation. So we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. This is Dead or Alive 2, and we're upscaled to 1280 by 960. This is a really predictable emulator. If this game's running at full speed like this, you shouldn't have any trouble running any other game as long as it's compatible with the ReDream emulator on this device. Next up, we have some PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken 6, 2x resolution, no frame skip, no hacks. We're getting a constant 60 here. Performance is really great with a game like this, but there are some games that are just harder to emulate, like God of War. Two X resolution, no frame skip. I do have all the hacks on that I can use here. And unfortunately, we just can't hit that constant 60 at two X. If you bring it down to one X, it'll work fine, but on a big screen, it just doesn't look great. So what I would recommend was turning frame skip to one, set it to two or three X resolution. You're only gonna get 30 FPS out of this game, but it's gonna look much cleaner. And finally, for emulation, we have some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. This is Soul Calibur 2, not the hardest to run, and we're getting a really good frame rate. It does dip down every once in a while, but in my opinion, this is fully playable. Now, this doesn't mean that every single GameCube game is going to run at full speed on this device, but a lot of great games will work just fine. For instance, I had really good luck with Super Mario Sunshine, we'll show that at the end, but Automotalista, which is known to be one of the harder ones to emulate, runs at about half speed, a little over, 34, 35 FPS. Definitely not playable here, but Super Mario Sunshine runs at its native 30 FPS, and it runs great on this device. So emulation on a chip like this is a bit hit or miss. Dreamcast, N64, SNES, all of that stuff's going to be really playable, but when we move up to PSP, GameCube, and even higher than that, it really comes down to a per-game basis. 
So in the end, the Access 4 is obviously not a supercomputer, it's not a gaming computer, but when it comes down to it, you could use this as your everyday PC for web browsing, email checking, Zoom, Skype meetings, everything like that, this thing actually functions really well with. And one thing that really impressed me about this was the maximum temperature that I reached through all of my testing, even through gaming. It only hit 76 degrees Celsius, which is pretty crazy for a little PC with no built-in fan. But then again, this all comes down to the way they have that power management set up for the CPU. And that's the big reason we're not hitting those burst speeds on the CPU and the GPU all the time. And it's definitely limiting the performance that this thing can put out, and we're not reaching the full potential that this chip can offer. I also wanted to check power consumption on the Access 4, and this thing absolutely sips power. With the power plan in Windows 10 set to balanced, the Access 4 idles at 2.8 watts, 4K video playback maximum here I saw was 7.3 watts, and the most I could get this thing to pull from the wall was using Cinebench R20, and that was 9.9 .9 watts. So it's really low on the power consumption side, and given that we're only pulling a maximum of 10 watts from this stick, I think performance here is actually really great. And since this is such a low power consumption unit, I wanted to see if we could run this off a battery bank. It does run on 5 volts with the included power supply, so I just grabbed a 10,000 milliamp hour USB Type-C power bank that I had laying around, plugged it into the USB Type-C port on the Access 4, and booted it up. So yeah, this could definitely be run on battery power. Keep in mind this little battery bank that I have does put out 5 volts, 3 amps, right out of that USB Type-C, so we have plenty of power for the stick. So as a lot of my regular viewers know, I'm a big fan of these mini PCs, and the Access 4 is no different. I'm definitely not getting the best performance that I've seen out of the J4105, but they really optimize this for power consumption and heat, because it's a fanless design. And they really have this thing set up to where you could be streaming 4K video 24-7, and you'd never hit thermal throttle with it. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. There are other operating systems that I'd like to test on this, and if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the Access 4, I'll leave a link to Azul's website. But like always, thanks for watching.